Welcome back to a very special episode of Victoria the Bard. I tell stories of the fantastical kind, but not today. You see, I thought it would have been quite interesting if I talked a bit about Renaissance music. Yes, all the latest trends of 400 years ago. Never mind. I shall be talking a bit about some of the most famous instruments of the Renaissance period and explaining how to play a bit of my own instruments. But first, to understand it all, you must go to the piano. The thing you need to understand first is what a scale is. Now a scale it consists of eight notes and it spans an octave. An octave is the distance between a note like maybe C to another C is the next C over. It would sound something like this. Low C, high C. A scale is just that for playing all the other notes in between, like this. Now you can start the scale on different notes. You could do it on D or E or F, G, A or B. But with those scales, you may have to add another accidental, which are almost always the black keys on the piano. There you have it. Now we will get into my own instruments. This is called a kalimba. Now this instrument is very interesting. Africa had it. They just happened upon the idea, I guess. It wasn't really brought over to Europe until towards the late Renaissance, and not many people heard about it. But it, it's a very nice sounding instrument, and I like playing it, and you'll see me playing it in many of my other videos. Now, how you play it is, it's a very strange in instrument in the fact that it goes back and forth. You see, you have C right here, you have D, and there's our scale, but it, it's just very odd having to go back and forth. And it takes a toll on you whenever you're trying to play a song, believe me I know, because you really have to think about if you're taking a step down. Or just skipping over notes. Kind of like this. See? Even I had trouble finding the note in the beginning. It's just a very odd instrument, but it has a very nice wind chime sound for it. Now this this instrument goes by several different names. Um, I call it the Ethereal Sound Drum. It's one of its names. Some other names are the Steel Tongued Drum. But it, it's, it has a very hollow sound to it. Now this instrument is very interesting because it popped up everywhere, it seemed. Pe people like the Aztecs invented it people in Africa, people in Indonesia, and they all invented it on their own. It, it was just a very common idea, and of course it didn't really get brought over to America until like the early 2000s, but you know, Renaissance had trade, and so <laughs> I, I still like the sound of it. Now this one is kind of like the kalimba in the way it goes back and forth. But the weird part is, it has three notes down the center. See, um, our scale would go something like... See? And so there's still notes under it, and it starts down here. a different sound to it. It, I like playing Carol on, of the Bells on it, kind of like um, a 
and you'll hear me play this in the intros to a lot of my earlier episodes. Uh, it's a very nice hello sound, very relaxing. It, it's a very cool instrument too. Looks like a turtle shell. The last instrument I'm going to show you of mine is called the ocarina. Now these are quite popular right now. They're characterized by the more whimsical sound to them. They have many different types. They have the six hole, which is smaller and usually has the higher pitch. The squeakier. And they have the 12 hole, who that usually has the more hollow pitch. And they date back to China. They had a form of it in Meso Mesoamerica. And they're, they're very old instruments. They're played by blowing into the mouthpiece and then moving your fingers along the hole. And kind of like a flute. Okay. Not that hard to play if you ever get your hands on one. They sell them at Ren Renaissance festivals and they're, they're very nice sounding. There we go. Now we will move on to more of the most famous Renaissance instruments and kind of explain what they're like. Renaissance music not only changed how medieval music was played with instruments, but it changed it in style. Renaissance music started kind of bringing in more sounds. It's called polyphony. And there might have been the main melody and then they might have added the harmony or the bass or whatever, while medieval music only really focused on the main melody. They also started paying attention to tones, making the listener really tune in on what key the musician was playing. They also started taking risks, really kind of experimenting with different sounds, and really it worked out for the better. But the instruments also changed quite a lot. I have a bit of a list here, sorry. They used the harpsichord, which is kind of like a piano, and in, in the way that it doesn't, like a piano, it has strings inside, of course, and there are tiny hammers banging on them. Whenever you press down a key, it lets down a hammer, and it kind of sends out the vibration, right? But in a harpsichord, it plucks it using a triggering mechanism, and it has a very fancy sound to it. They also use the viol which is similar to kind of a cello today, I guess, and in the fact that it's a larger violin and it's played between the legs. They also use the lute, which is kind of like a guitar, and it's plucked and held like one. They use the rebec, which also is an, in the violin family, except it's kind of played lower, more to the side, it still has a bow. They used the um, the lyre. It, that's actually a very old instrument too. It's a kind of like a handheld harp. It's, you just play it kind of like that. You pluck the strings. They used a guitar. I should hope that people know what a guitar is. Um, they used a recorder, which is kind of like a clarinet or a flute, and pull it kind of down low and breathe through it, and put your fingers over the holes. They use the trumpet, which is also similar to the cornet. They use the sack butt. There's another name for that. It's the trombone. It just calls it differently then. It was... It's a very nice name for that. I, I realize that now. Um, they use the tambourine for percuss percussion. And uh, the transverse flute, which is more similar to the flutes we use today. It's held sideways and through and through. Well, there you have it. That is your Renaissance music, kind of a, what do they call it nowadays? A crash course, I believe. Hope you all have enjoyed this episode, and I shall be back next week with a new and exciting story to make to rattle your bones and make excitement course through your veins. Anywhere, my friends. <laughs>